Hello and welcome to this episode of Retro Gaming with Ricardo. And you've guessed it. It's that song you're going to be singing all week. Bomb the bass. And Mega Blast. This of course is from the game Zenon 2 Mega Blast. Which is a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up Unusual for the genie at the time. The player's spaceship can reverse in the scrolling area of play for a limited distance. Which was a game changing concept. The game has a generic sci-fi theme and almost no plot, focusing instead on presentation and gameplay, and lots of button bashing. The Bitmap Brothers cooperated with British musician Tim Simeon to include the 1988 Bomb the Brace hip-hop track Mega Blast as the theme music, which you can hear now. There are two versions of the track in the game, a nearly faithful rendition, only missing a few spoken lines as the loading music, and a simplified version as the in-game background music. The Amiga version, however, of the loading music is based on the same track, but significantly different, with such changes as helicopter sound effects at the beginning and end. The game is one of the first instances of a computer being programmed to play a pop single with reasonable accuracy. Given the generic sci-fi theme of Mega Blast, the player of Zenon 2 must rely heavily on power-ups while shooting those aliens, which may be gained by shooting up containers that appear through the levels. When an enemy or a wave of enemies are destroyed, they leave behind credits in the shape of bubbles. Make sure you pick up those bubbles. Small bubbles are worth 50 credits and large bubbles are worth 100. When a mid-level boss or ender level boss is destroyed, they explode to reveal loads of credit bubbles. Credits are then spent at Collins Bargain Basement, the owner of which bearing a remarkable resemblance to the alien from the film Predator. Now Collins' shop appears at mid-level and at the end of the level. At later levels, getting credit bubbles becomes easier as certain areas contain an endless supply of enemies, strange bee-like creatures and killer kites which will always drop a credit bubble upon dying. If the player stays long enough, making slight movements backwards, he can get an enormous amount of credits. This is where the major glitch occurs in Zenon 2. If you accidentally overcollect the credit bubbles trying to maximise your money to the highest possible amount, the money counter will simply wrap round back to zero. Now you'll only find that out when you finish the level. When this happens, the player is left with something like 200 or 500 credits. The game becomes next to impossible and the player has to start all over again. And the fact it's rock hard as it is. This game was released on the Atari ST, which is the version you can see in front of you now, completely unemulated and taken directly from the Atari computer via a video capture card on the RF card. It was also released for the Amiga, and also a PC version was released, which contained a cheat mode in the graphic menu. Press F7 and then activate. Press the I key when playing in order to become invisible, or invincible, I should say. The reception of this game, computer and video games of the day, gave the ST and Amiga versions 94 and 96% respectively, praising the graphics, sound and gameplay, calling it utterly superb. Here we've got an example of Collins Gate. It's Colin, everybody. It's Collins Halftime Game Shop. Now, you can sell items of your ship, but we don't want to do that because that there is a rear firing blaster. But you can buy other stuff as well. You've got health. You've got bombs. Some stuff you can't put on your ship because there's not enough space and you have to lose something. Or you need an additional upgrade by which to install it. As you can see, there was not enough room on my ship for that one particular item. But other items can reduce your crash quite quickly. So be sure to pick up those bubbles in game. Zenon 2 Mega Blast is widely regarded as one of the most difficult shoot 'em ups of the Amiga and ST game era of the 1990s. And I thought it was just me. I thought I was being rubbish. In light of the effort required to complete the game, Fans, including people from Bullrock, Bullfrog software like Peter Moino, were said to have been greatly disappointed by its output. The shopkeeper in his usual setting congratulates you for finishing the game and tells you, you can now turn off your computer. Then the screen goes black and waiting will not help. However, in the PC version, when you hit fire, 
In this screen, the game starts in the beginning, and a special mode. Most enemies have more health, which significantly increases the game's difficulty, as if you needed that. The game was ranked the 33rd best Amiga game of all time by Amiga Power. In contrast, Amiga Format's review was very harsh in 1992. They rated it a paltry 32%, commenting that while innovative at the time when it was released, the game had aged poorly and its gameplay was not well balanced. Well, it was indeed rock hard. It's a good job you came with three credits for the game as well, because I've burnt through a few of those already. What I did find as well playing the game, whilst using a Kempson joystick, so not a slouch of a joystick, was that even repeatedly pressing the fire button, you couldn't get that rate of fire to destroy the aliens as if you would in games like Gallagher or Galaxians. That sort of type of game. Whereas you need to produce a constant stream of bullets. Upgrades throughout the game, however, will give you multiple shots, shots in different directions, big honking guns or missiles. As you can see, I'm burning through the lives at this stage, absolutely burning through them. The items on the side looking like undersea creatures. Shooting out pellets can drain your health as well, as can colliding with the aliens as you what you'd expect. These aliens here I think were particularly difficult. And I only got to two levels through this game. It was completely probably beyond my skill set, I have to say. Even though the frantic button pressing of that joystick, I wasn't able to get further than that second level. And here I am invoking yet another credit and continuing the game. So get ready, player one. Let's get back to it. Fortunately, they didn't take all my weapons off me, which was good, because that would make it completely impossible. Lots of dodging back and forth as well is imperative in this game. And as well, trying to stay in the center of the screen though you are prone then to being attacked by the, the swarm. There is no safe place, is what I'm trying to say. Now I'm sure some of you are much better at this game than me. I admit it, I'm not very good. I can see what, what's happening straight away. I'm gonna get right to the end where I need all my lives and I'm gonna be lacking in that respect. So I've tried a different approach and gone on the left hand side as opposed to the right. I'm trying to pick an area where I can shoot the swarms with a single stream of bullets. As you progress through the game, more and more aliens appear on the side of the screen to shoot items at you. As you can see there, a rock moves back. Something comes out on a stalk, like an eye on a stalk, and then shoots bigger bullets at you from the sidelines. These can be destroyed, however, by moving directly into the sides of the wall, which won't kill you if you touch them, and shooting them. Although sometimes it's just as easy to try and move past or take the or take the one hit against your health. As we get near to the end of level boss now, we're getting these exploding pods on the side of the screen. Again, sometimes it's easier just to move out the way. And now I've collected a rocket, and that's what we need. This rocket shoots directly through swarms of aliens, if you can get it lined up correctly. I'm nearly out of health and I'm about to die. Here is the end of level boss and you'll notice the side exploding aliens. Now you can only shoot and damage that boss. Please don't try and fly into it like what I did. Now you can only damage that boss when its trunk, or tendril, we'll call it, has been retracted. Now remember, you can move backward and scroll backwards down the game.
Now we can let him have it. Hopefully without dying and clearing too much damage. Using that rocket at this stage. But retreating further gives you enough space to manoeuvre when the trunk or tendril comes out and there you go, there are all the bubbles to collect. Now we're back to Colin's shop and to see what else we can buy. We've got 3,500 credits, but we don't want to sell anything to be perfectly honest because the weapons that we have are helping. Not a hell of a lot. Granted, and I'm sure some of you in the comments will mention that, but look at the range of items you can now select. A double shot. Mines. Electric balls. Who were misses? Other items that the ship cannot accommodate and health. And the double shot, that's the stuff for me. With that credit spent, it's time to progress now to the next level. Given this being on a disk drive, the time of loading is at least 10 seconds, at least. I think now with faster loading speeds, people forget how laborious the loading times were with these older games. Now I don't expect to progress much past the first couple of frames on the next level, given that I've, in, I've lost most of my lives and I'm down to my last credit. Now what seems to be the longest count from 10 down to zero, we're ready to go to level two. Again, not a hell of a lot of different in change of the graphics, though we have maintained our weapons. More eye stalks on the side, firing in from the periphery. Lots of swarming aliens with aliens coming in from behind. It's a shame that on this game there wasn't more life lost to try and ease the difficulty of the game. I know not all games should be easy, but sometimes things can be absolutely ridiculous. And it's difficult to understand how people can complete these without a trainer. No trainer used here today though. And that's it, that's me. And now on to my final credit. course laborious loading times again. So the missile is shooting directly through swarms which does help somewhat. However the angled side of this level is proving it difficult to maneuver especially with aliens coming in from the back as well. Incurring more damage now. I'm not gonna last much past this and I've died. Final lives remaining there. It's almost as if we want this to be over. I want this to be over. A good game, a graphically fantastic representation of what an arcade game could be in the home of the time with lovely graphics, good sound and what would seem to be great gameplay. Although the difficulty settings set, I think, just beyond the reach of the general player. And now what I think is my last life. Please let it be over. And here they come to make my wish come true. Methods of 
moving out the way don't seem to be working. And that's it, everybody. I've been Ricardo, and this has been this week's episode of Retro Gaming. This has been Zenon 2 Mega Blast by the Bitmap Brothers, featuring Bomb the Bass as that catchy soundtrack. Catch back for more episodes, more retro gaming to happen soon.